In this video, I'm going to tell you how many deer there are in the state of Texas. And I'm going to break populations down by a region. Not only that, but we'll go a step further and I'm going to break down where the populations are trending in each region, especially on the more popular regions like South Texas and the Edwards Plateau. Now these estimates came from Texas Parks and Wildlife and their ongoing survey of white-tailed deer. Let's jump right into it. Welcome to Landowner TV where I make you smarter about your land one video at a time. On this channel, I cover topics that landowners frequently have questions about. And I'll even get into some topics like water law and easements. But lately, I've been on a little bit of a deer kick. In fact, I just posted a video on Axis deer. It's doing pretty well. You should go check it out. It covers everything you want to know about Axis deer in Texas. So, if you're a landowner or just someone who enjoys learning about land in general, be sure to subscribe to the channel to learn more about your land one video at a time. Okay, so how many deer are there in Texas? How many whitetail really are there out there? Well, the latest population estimates by Texas Parks and Wildlife indicate around 5.6 million deer. By the way, that's more than any other state. And it looks like Mississippi and Alabama are running for second and third, with around 1.8 million deer each. Now, since I'm your dude, I'm gonna remind you that this is just an estimate. Nobody's out there counting every single deer. In fact, although Texas Parks and Wildlife indicates 5.6 million deer, and a lot of other websites are, are saying there's 5.6 million deer in Texas, that number is an estimate with some pretty wide confidence intervals. I dug into the data and here's what they say. Although the mean is 5.6 million deer, the 95% confidence intervals indicate between 3.6 million and 8.5 million. That's a broad range. So really, we don't know. Don't jump off the video, but quickly, how confidence intervals work is that you have an upper limit and a lower limit, in this case 3.6 and 8.5 million, and in between there, there's this bell curve. And what this data indicates is we're 95% sure that it's between 3.6 and 8.5 million deer. And the most likely number in between that is right at 5.6. Now the important thing here isn't the exact number of deer. It's important to document their trend over time. And so long as the data is collected in a consistent fashion over time, which this data has been since 2005, you're able to calculate very valuable trends over time. And that's what's going on here. Now, Texas Parks and Wildlife conducts surveys every year. And they keep these surveys as similar as possible year over year to create consistency in the data. Now, ecologists have already broken the state down into about 10 ecoregions. Check them out. Most of these probably sound pretty familiar to you. Now, within an ecoregion, there's usually distinct geography and rainfall, and there's only a handful of vegetative communities possible within a typical ecoregion. So just as you see here, these ecoregions have similar landscapes and ecology within them relative to other ecoregions across the state. And the ones that may sound familiar to you here are the Edwards Plateau, Post Oak Savannah, and obviously the South Texas Brush Country. All you deer hunters out there probably have heard of that. Now for the purposes of these surveys, Texas Parks and Wildlife has broken these ecoregions down even further into something they call deer management units. You can check them out right here. Feel free to pause the video to check them out. Or even better, go to landassociation.org where I have an entire article dedicated to the topic of this video. And you'll find all the images right there. Now, like I mentioned, they've been collecting this data in a similar fashion since 2005. And the report that's published by Parks and Wildlife shows these trends by deer management unit. Okay, so we got through all that, on to more data. Now, as you might expect, on a statewide basis, white-tailed deer populations have trended upward steadily since we've been recording the data. This goes all the way back to 1989 when we estimated around three and a half million deer in the state of Texas. Now, in 1989, the data was collected just a little differently than it is today, but it's been consistently collected this way since 2005. And in 2005, our estimates were once again around three and a half million deer, indicating almost no population growth in the, in the interim. But once again, it was hard to compare the difference in that time frame given the difference in the way the data was collected. But we do know it's been collected consistently since 2005. And what we can say is that populations have increased steadily across the state and across every single region in the state of Texas. Go to 2015 and the deer estimates are around 4 million in the state of Texas. By 2018, just two years ago, they were 4.6 million. And today we're estimating 5.6, which is some pretty staggering growth. Now let's jump into the regions and understand where these growths and populations are really coming from. Now check this out. This is a listing of the regions by population in the state of Texas. And we shouldn't be surprised here to see the Edwards Plateau has way more deer than any other region in the state of Texas. In fact, it's around triple the population of any other single region. And we're not saying there's more deer there just because the Edwards Plateau is any larger than any other eco region. If you look at the average number of deer per thousand acres on this chart, you'll see that there's also around triple the density of any other region. Now the Edwards Plateau is king of whitetail in the state of Texas, at least when it comes to population. 
Now when it comes to antler scores, I intend on doing a video very soon to discuss which regions of the state have the best antler scores. Now if you look at the data this way, you can see that the Edwards Plateau accounts for almost half the deer in the entire state. I could also do an entire video around the deer populations and trends around each region. But for the purposes of this video, we'll go over just a few of the more popular regions of the state of Texas. And since we already mentioned it, and it's at the top of our list, let's talk about the Edwards Plateau. The Edwards Plateau is in central Texas, and it's more commonly known as the Texas Hill Country. You're going to love it if you haven't been there. It's known for its many springs, its rock outcrops, hills, steep canyons, cedar, and its average rainfall is between 15 and 30 inches, just depending on where you're at. It also holds underneath it the very famous Edwards Aquifer. Now the Edwards Plateau is also comprised of five deer management units from Texas Parks and Wildlife. Check out the population growth here. It was relatively flat from between 2005 and 2013, but since 2013, it's grown consistent and steadily, going from about a million and a half deer to around 2.2 million today. Now deer density within the Edwards Plateau varies pretty wildly. Here's the deer density for each deer management unit in the Edwards Plateau. Now the highest density of any deer management unit in the entire state of Texas goes to deer management unit six. And you've heard all about these counties, Llano, San Saba, Gillespie, and Kerr counties. But with an average deer density in deer management unit six of around 293 deer per 1,000 acres, that's over one deer per four acres across a huge landscape. That is the highest white-tailed deer density anywhere in the country. Now let's talk about the cross timbers and prairies. Check them out. The cross timbers and prairies got their name cross timbers by early travelers who were traveling the prairies and reached several long linear timbered areas that blocked their path forward. Now this proved to be a barrier to their travel on the open prairies. Now it goes from central to north Texas and does have a high density of trees, native grasses, and several brush species. Like many other eco-regions in the state of Texas, the cross timbers and prairies exhibited consistent white-tailed deer population growth since 2005. In fact, the white-tailed deer populations in this region has almost doubled in that time period. Now, if you take a look at the deer densities, it goes from a very low population density of around 14 deer per thousand acres in deer management unit 22 to in the 80s for a couple of them. And that's approaching Edwards Plateau status. And it shouldn't surprise you, the deer management unit with the highest population of deer in this ecoregion borders the Edwards Plateau. And it's comprised of Hamilton, Coriel, and Lampasas counties. Next up are the Piney Woods of East Texas. Now this region of pine forest is actually one segment of a much larger pine forest that extends into Louisiana, Arkansas, and even Oklahoma. But clearly, for the purposes of this video, we're only counting the portion in Texas. Now of all the ecoregions of the state of Texas, the Piney Woods by far gets the most annual rainfall. And that's between 35 and 50 inches a year. Once again, white-tailed populations of the Piney Woods, shown here, have almost doubled since 2005. From around 150,000 estimated deer to almost 300,000 today. Now, compared to other eco-regions of the state, the deer density in the Piney Woods is much lower, reaching as low as seven deer per thousand acres in some areas. Now, I do suspect that some of these low numbers aren't necessarily indicative of how many deer are there because this region is notoriously difficult to survey. In particular, this deer management unit 13 with only seven deer per thousand acres. I'm pretty familiar with this area and there's a lot of swampy areas and very thick vegetation, making it practically impossible to run consistent survey lines. Now, for you East Texas folks, the highest population densities in East Texas are in the area of Polk, Jasper, Angelina, Tyler, and St. Augustine counties. Now, onto the Post Oak Savannah. Now, the Post Oak Savannah is really a transition area between the East Texas Piney Woods onto the Cross Timbers and Prairies. It does exhibit similar landscape features as the Cross Timbers and Prairies, but does receive more rainfall. And those of you who have been through College Station, Texas, have been right in the heart of the Post Oak Savannah. Now this region has exhibited the most extreme whitetail population growth since 2005. In fact, whitetail deer populations in this region have almost tripled in that time frame. Over most of the eco region, deer densities are actually pretty low, but there's one deer management unit within the Post Oak Savannah in particular that has really high densities. Shown here, deer management unit 11. This is the southern tip of the region and includes Caldwell, Fayette, Lavaca, Gonzales, and DeWitt counties. Okay, last on my list today, but certainly not least, is the South Texas brush country. This area is characterized by thorny, shrubby trees and brush, and scattered patches of palms and subtropical woodlands. And if you've ever been down there, you know that everything either stings or bites or pokes you when you're walking through the landscape. But hey, I love the South Texas brush country. And not just for hunting. It's got a great variety of wildlife. Now the average rainfall there goes from about 30 inches on the eastern coastline to 20 inches or less on the western Rio Grande Plains. It's also one of the most famous regions for deer hunting in the world. 
and it's also known for the epic Golden Triangle. And of all the data, I was most excited to see what Parks and Wildlife showed for South Texas. I even held my breath as I looked at it. But unfortunately, after I looked at it, I saw the estimates varied wildly from year to year. This indicates either variability in the data collection or very low confidence in the results, which is the case here. So although I'm showing the population trend here, I'm also saying I'm not really confident which way this trend's going. And this is why Parks and Wildlife post those confidence intervals so folks like you and me can understand the data. Now the area of South Texas that seems to indicate the highest whitetail population density was Maverick, Zavala, and Dimmitt County. Hey, if you made it through the whole video, thank you so much. Be sure to go to the channel and check out any other videos I have that may be of interest to you. And if you want more information around your land, around all these topics, don't forget landassociation.org. I'll see you on the next video.